Hello everyone, Dan Herbert, Dan Herbert Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. I'm coming to you from inside a gold mine. One of my favorite gold mines. And I've got some very special ore to work with today. So, wish me luck, and I hope you enjoy. Now last year, I did some sampling in the mine here three or four different spots and I was gonna put the sampling on a video but I didn't. Uh, one thing the sampling showed me though was one very interesting and intriguing spot right here, right there. Why it was intriguing is it didn't show as much gold as over on the other side but it showed much bigger gold, big crystalline gold and not just that it also had big, well not big but quartz crystals, fully formed, clear quartz crystals, and crystalline gold. Gold that looks like it formed in between fully formed quartz crystals. So, that intrigues me. I only took a small sample, a few handfuls. I am going to take a big sample now of the material on the ground. You see that? Hello, froggy. I know, someone's going to tell me it's a toad, not a frog. Whatever. Look at that, living inside the gold mine. There's a gold digger for you. Anyhow, where was I? Really neat ore, really big gold, crystalline gold, fully formed crystals. I want a good sample of this stuff. That's what I'm doing today. And I'll also take it home, clean it up, and show you those quartz crystals and whatever gold I get out of that bucket, or buckets. Now here is the quartz vein, or the ore vein that we are working, that has the gold in it. And yes, there is visible gold often seen in pieces coming out of this quartz vein. I have my special watch frog, my guard frog, on the quartz vein itself. And that dips down, 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 into the floor and around. Right there is where I took the sample from that found so many quartz crystals and that piece of gold that was so huge, was big and crystalline. Looks like there's lots more material to dig. Let's get to it. I mistakenly left my camera on time-lapse mode. This would have been the best clip of the entire video. I was pulling out these big, huge quartz crystals fully formed right from the seam. I was extracting them, I was finding crystal after crystal after crystal, but my camera was left in time-lapse mode, so I filmed this whole thing on time-lapse. But this was one of the most exciting times I've ever had in this mine, pulling these quartz crystals right out of this soft, clayey, dissolved, decomposed iron material, and there were hundreds of them in here. Oh, and yes, my watch frog was still watching over me collecting the crystals. You can see the rusty material I'm digging in, and everywhere you looked, there were these quartz crystals. So I don't have any water with me right now to clean that off, but I do back in the truck. When I get back to the truck, I'll clean that up and show you what I got. That is a nice quartz crystal. Well, I've got four two-gallon buckets full back at the quad, and I'm going to do one more, making it five. That'll be ten gallons. That should be give me a good, good sample to take home and check out. And I know I got the most amazing quartz. Let's hope there's also amazing gold. Really thankful. Really thankful for these Olites here. They are amazing at lighting my way down here in the mine shaft. I'm going to take this little spot right here in the bucket, and that'll be it for digging. And we get to go see the goodies afterwards. Maybe I'll take you for a quick tour of the mine once I've done digging this bucket. I love the looks of that back passageway with that beam over top of it. Just looks like it just screams old mine, which it is. Now this side is definitely the more, the richer side, the more lucrative side. That vein up there is where we found most of our gold. And the debris on the floor. 
Watch out for that drill bit sticking out of the wall. It hurts. Trust me. Yes, I don't have my hard hat on today. Again, I forgot to bring it. There's the seam right up there. Apparently right along the ceiling, right at that spot, is really, really good. I'm just not brave enough to start chipping away at that. Don't like seeing rocks in the floors of mines. That means things have fallen from above. Right there. Scary. I like this back passage. Almost no rocks in the floor means it's quite stable. I did a sample back here and found almost no gold. Almost no gold at the back of the mine. Well, that was a lot more fun than I expected, finding all those big quartz crystals. I was just looking for grabbing a good ore sample. I didn't expect to actually see anything in here that was gonna excite me as much as those did. I'm gonna take those things home, I'm gonna clean them up, I'm gonna go process the ore and see what kind of gold was in it, and I'll definitely show you the results. So I've made it home with my ore sample here, and as you probably already heard in the video, I screwed up the footage underground. Unfortunately, filming in the dark underground with big bright lights in your eyes, I have a hard time seeing the camera to see things like what mode it's on. And I left it in time lapse mode for the best clip of the dig. I should have got a great clip of me extracting those quartz crystals from the pocket itself, but unfortunately, the camera was on time-lapse, so I didn't really get that clip. Hopefully I can salvage a little bit of it. Anyhow, I'm back here at the property. I have got my three buckets of ore to work with. I'm going to classify it all out to sort of tiny, medium, big using my Arbor Fabric Cleaning Classifier. Link in the description for a discount. They're the best. I'm gonna pan out the smallest stuff I'm gonna dig through the medium and big stuff for the quartz crystals, and I'm gonna clean up the best specimens in acid, hoping to find a piece of gold, like wire gold on quartz crystal. That would be amazing. That would be the best find I've ever had at this mine. If I could find a quartz crystal with a piece of wire gold growing through it, whew, couldn't get any better than that. Wish me luck. So my first step is to classify using the 1 8th. Everything sub 1 8th will be panned out. After picking through the oversized classified stuff, I ended up with seven big clusters. Some of them are really nice, some of them not so much. But once those are all cleaned up, like that one needs a lot of cleaning, that one might be amazing inside. Uh, once they're all cleaned up, they should look really nice. And these are the ones that I'm really hoping show a piece of wire gold or something, some sort of gold in them. Now I also found about 25 of these bigger crystals, but unfortunately most of them are just segments or fragments of the bigger crystals. There are some complete ones, there are some real nice complete ones, but a lot of them are just broken up pieces. I did take the two biggest pieces home already and started soaking them in acid, so they're already cleaning up and I'll definitely show you those here, but they are, they are much more perfect than most of these. And we have countless small crystals, and these are the ones that are mostly really, really nicely formed. And I say countless because these are just a few of the ones I pulled out of those two buckets over there. The buckets are still full of the classified material, and there are lots of these crystals left in those two buckets. I think I'm going to be using these little crystals once they're cleaned up in my Golden Gem pay dirt bags, and also I'm going to put them in with the hard rock ore pay dirt bags because the hard rock ore comes from this exact mine. May as well have a crystal in each bag. This is a neat one. It's a twin. Two side by side. The next step is going to be to pan out this bucket which is going to be a very long tedious process. I'll show you what I find when I'm done the bucket. This is all the small stuff. <laughs> Last pan of the small stuff. I've been keeping all the cons from every pan. Some of them have shown bigger pieces. Most of them show just little stuff. But there is gold in every single pan. But again, as always, 
not as much as I'd hoped. And I'm not done with this ore sample here. Once I'm done panning it all out, I'm gonna put it all into a cement mixer and let it tumble for a few hours. Break up the rust clumps that are in there in case they were holding any gold. And then I'll run it all through those sluice afterwards just to see if there was anything left over that I missed. Very slow going when doing this hard rock crush stuff. Just poured a little bit of muriatic acid on top of the cons there, letting it dissolve a bit of the iron, and it'll also make the gold a bit shinier so we can see what's gold and what's just rust clumps. Now while the cons are soaking in the acid, the next step will be to classify this stuff down to quarter inch and see if there's any big chunks of gold or specimens in the one eighth to quarter. I'll only show you that if I actually find something. So I left the uh, cons just sitting in an acid for about half an hour. Nice strong acid to remove the iron, and that way we can see the gold really well. There it is, and there we go. There's the gold. Very coarse little chunks. Lots of them. Not as many as I'd liked, but lots of them all the same. As I was classifying down to quarter inch, I found hundreds of more points and crystals and crystal clusters and potential clusters. Hundreds of more of them. Because I was going slow and just a little bit at a time, I was able to identify a lot more. So in the oversized stuff, there was no piece of gold, but I think I see gold on the end of this piece of iron. So I'm gonna put that in with the cons just in case. Throw it in the microscope and find out for sure. Just visually going through the oversized stuff, and I think I found a piece of gold. Gold on quartz. Woohoo! So I'm back here at home right now, cleaning up some of the crystals and the clusters. I've got a time lapse going on right now of this crystal cluster here being dissolved in a fairly significant acid. It's taking a picture every minute just to see what it looks like. It's kind of interesting how you can see that the heavy irons that are dissolving into the acid are sinking to the bottom. Kind of curious. I have cleaned up some of the other crystals already. Here is the nice big one I found, the nicest, the nicest find of the trip. I've already cleaned it up in acid. This is an interesting one. It's got this little crystal cluster growing off the side of a big, big crystal. It still has a little bit of work to be done to clean that up nicely. I will take some pictures for you. I have all the smaller crystals and small crystal clusters. It's hard to say, crystal clusters, uh, soaking in acid as well. And once they're cleaned up, I'll take a good picture of everything for you. Lots of good pictures of these crystals. It's exciting. There's a neat interior to this crystal. So clear. Thanks for watching this episode of Dan Heard Prospecting. We love getting to share our videos and we would not be able to do it for free if it weren't for our patrons on Patreon. So if you are a patron, thanks for making all this happen. And if you'd like to learn more about supporting free prospecting, education, and entertainment online, go to patreon.com slash danherd. I hope you all enjoyed the video. And until the next one, everyone. Bye.